I didn't stop eating my meatloaf, but I seriously considered it. Welcome to Fridays on the Fly, Episode 2. I'm Eric. And I'm Ward. Follow our creative adventures as we discuss movies, our short films, community projects, stories and scripts, the occasional radio drama performance, and other topics that cross our minds. I want to start with the sheer number of Facebook pages you created. <laughs> Did you create four pages? No. Let's start at the beginning. First, I created a whole new profile. Apparently, on Facebook, you actually have to be a real person. When I signed up, I used one of my many email addresses. And then for my first name, I used Rockingham Wee. <laughs> for my last name, I used Community Arts Project. <laughs> they took it. I started to click on friends, said, find friends. I clicked on that, and I just started clicking every person, requesting them. So after I clicked on, I don't know, probably about 500, it stopped me. It said, you can only have 5,000 friends. And I'm like, okay, well, I only clicked on 500. But I kept getting all these people responding and saying they were my friends. So before Facebook caught on, I had something like 140 friends or 150 friends, more friends than my own personal Facebook page has. I'm a real life person. This is fake. People have never heard of the group, but that page has more friends than I do. And Facebook shut me down. They send you through this process to figure out if you're a real person or not. First, they put up the verification thing where if you're a computer, you can't do it. You can't see the numbers and letters. So I click, I type in that. Everything goes fine. So then it says, all right, we're going to run you through a test. It pops up a picture and then it says, who is this tagged in this picture? And it gives you five names to choose from. I only knew 20 people that were the friends on there. The rest I just clicked randomly and they accepted. So obviously I couldn't pass the test. So I failed that test. So, you know, Facebook dumped, dumped that page. Uh, so they actually gave you a test of friends you'd request and asked you if you knew who they were. Right. So That's awesome. Yeah, no, it wasn't awesome at all because I failed the <laughs> test. <laughs> Even when they would show you like five pictures They'd show you one at a time, and they would give you five. And I thought, you know what? All right, I got three of them one, at one time. You know, could you take the test over and over and over again? So I got three of them at one time. I was like, I'm good. I'm gold. I got. I know those three people. I'm, apparently, you need to get 100 percent on the test. That's the only way they're letting you pass. That Facebook page failed, even though I feel like it was successful in the fact that it got more friends than I have, and probably you have. I don't know how many friends I have, but I don't can't imagine I have 140 friends on Facebook. You really? You all have 140? You think you have more than 140 friends on Facebook? I used to have at one time 300. When people annoy me, I just kind of delete them, and that happens a lot. That does happen a lot for me. When you post too much just junk, I'm, I'm going to work now. You're, you're, you're done. Uh, you're off. I had one person that would use Facebook to chronicle their laundry adventures. I'm putting clothes in the washer. I'm putting clothes in the dryer. I'm folding clothes. No, wait, I'm not folding them. I'm going to put them on my bed and wait till later. Actually, that could actually be kind of interesting if they put pictures. <laughs> pictures would have helped, but they did not have pictures. Gosh. So after they dumped that page, I looked into the legitimate way of putting a group on Facebook. And I guess there is a legitimate way that you can do it. And the legitimate way is that you create a group page using your own personal page which I didn't want to do because I didn't want the page to be linked to me or to you or to any of us because I don't want people to go, oh, Eric put this page because, you know, I have a lot of people that don't like me for various reasons. <laughs> I just thought it would be better if it were just anonymous. And then actually, after I created that page onto my own personal page, I sent it to you to ask you how it showed up. Does it say Eric Pollock requested this page? And apparently it does, and it links it to me. I didn't like that. I went back to the original idea of creating a whole new persona using the first name and last name, Rockingham We, last name, Arts Project. And that's been accepted. I didn't go through and just start clicking random friends. What I did was I started with like 50, 50 that I knew. So if they quizzed me on the pictures, I could get it. They haven't yet. They haven't caught on. Every couple hours or so, I'll just scroll through and hit find friends and click five to 10 friends. I have no idea what we're up to now, but it's much slower going than it was when I was just randomly selecting people. But I did post a picture, the picture that you made, the I art Rockingham County, and I did post the picture that you sent of the printing of the Google pin. 
If you go to Facebook and search for We Arts Rockingham County, that's our page. Is that correct? I think it's Rockingham We Arts Project. There's a hyphen for Arts Project just because it was a last name, and I thought I'd hyphen it. <laughs> I wonder why you hyphenated it now. I know. <laughs> It's because I thought it would get past the Facebook censors a little easier that way. Do you think Facebook has a secret police? I don't think I have a secret police, but I think they've been through this process enough where they're just, buddy, you're not getting around this. I can't believe that they somehow didn't filter out that name. My first name in the thing is Rockingham We. Two words. Is that really all that strange? Names today, I think it falls within that category. <laughs> That's why I hyphened Arts Project, just so, just so maybe, hey, maybe that is my name. <laughs> That is the page for our art project. Last time we did discuss the center of town Google Maps pennant project. I did have some other ideas for the project that I thought we could just add on to it. And when we put the pin up, I really wanted to make some stickers, some pin stickers or something. Or you know what? Even just print it out, glue it to a popsicle stick so you can say, where's the center of your town? And maybe people could stick it around. I honestly thought <laughs> that little Google pin with Reedsville, North Carolina would be very popular to put on people's cars. So they didn't kind of turn into a business thing, and I was like, no, no, that, that's not what this is. <laughs> so these popsicle sticks with a sticker, yeah. where would people go to get one? It would be right attached to the Google pen. Make Perfect. a little box there, and you could just come and grab one, and where's the center of your town? Maybe see some around town. I'd stick one somewhere. Somebody's chewing on the popsicle stick. <laughs> <All right. laughs> well, what do you think about that? I love that. That's what I wanted is somehow you get the community engaged. You're creating a dialogue. That's what I want with this. Right. And that definitely does that. I just don't know that anyone's going to notice nor care. There's at least one or two people that may <laughs> notice. And out of that one or two, one may actually do something. And then on the back of the popsicle stick and the paper, the Google pin, say something like, post this on and tag such and such on Instagram or Facebook. Because Instagram, I think we could just make an Instagram account too. And That is in the works. I've been creating accounts a lot of time, and Instagram is next on my list. Using Rockingham We Arts Project? That's way too long to tag. <laughs> Let's keep it simple. Because I'll create the Instagram account. I, I don't mind creating you, it. Okay, then you get yes, you. I'm taking my time with it. Yeah, yeah. We Arts Project. There can't be too many tags with that. We no, can okay. check that first. That is easy to remember. Fairly simple. Or just We Arts. I feel like there's a possibility there may be multiple. There may be some We, we arts, arts out there. Uh, I don't know. Some people are terrible at grammar on Instagram, so <laughs> I just want to take that number down. <laughs> And nowadays they spell we w i i because they don't know any better. <laughs> <laughs> now I was going to give you an, uh, the password for the Facebook page. Do I need access to it? Just in case you want to put stuff. I, you know, I don't know how you want to edit it. Maybe you want to edit it. <laughs> like it put my job, I put like Master of Public Arts. Yeah, I like <laughs> it just gives you the ability to go on there and edit it too. Well, like, I'm thinking, you know, if I went to the about page, I'm like, what is this guy about? Oh, wait, he's a master of public art. That's instant credibility for me. I'm going to believe what he says now. <laughs> Did you see what I put? I wrote something about yourself. can't remember what I put on there. Something like, what we're trying to achieve, how art is more than just putting lights and trees in a gazebo in the center of town. <laughs> something like that. I can't remember what I put. Which the gazebo has been removed. Has it really? It is gone. What's there? Nothing. There might be orange cones there now. I guess to denote that, hey, the gazebo's gone. I think they removed the gazebo because people from the bar were hanging out in the gazebo. Isn't that the point? Uh, you know, I don't think they want drunkards crossing any type of road. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I said. The last first person that gets hit by a car crossing to go sit in the gazebo, it's going to be a problem. Plus, there was a statue there that got hit by a car. Now you're putting a gazebo there where people are going to go sit. The last thing that was there got hit by a car. <laughs> Probably not the best idea to put seating there. I think that going account for the next project. They're going to reinforce it so that the car will not just run right over I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I think that pretty well wraps up the We Arts project. And I did think of something else that I wanted to do, but we can discuss that another time. Completely different project you're talking about? Completely different arts project, but it involves that shadow of William. Sure. Yeah. I think mean, we knock out the center of town, move on to the next one. And hopefully next week we will have some actual updates on that. No, we, we should make it this week. I mean, let's, let's, let's do it. We're committed. <laughs> I don't know, 8.45 sounded kind of late. <laughs> I wasn't that committed. <laughs> kind of tired. Well, plus I wanted to get your idea on, just don't know, don't know the best way to, what to mount it on and the best way to mount it on. I mean, do we just make a frame around? Do we just, just to make it lighter? I mean, instead of making the whole thing out of wood, we could just take wood and maybe cut the center out of it and just have it support. I, I just don't know. I mean, that, and that's your department, so. I think cardboard is the easiest, the most versatile material. Right. Of course, with rain and water, 
you know, I've printed these pins out on paper. So if it gets wet, it's up anyway. So right. with card, you might as well just use cardboard because your paper with the printed pin on it's going to be good water point. anyway. So we have to find cardboard large enough to fit the pin, which you don't have. I mean, it's a, it's a half a foot. and That's a very easy fix. Yeah. You just get some different pieces of cardboard. You just extend double layer out. and extend the sides. I mean, I don't expect to find six foot by three and a half foot pieces of cardboard. I expect we'll get a couple of different pieces. We'll double layer it so we can extend yeah. it out and do it that way. I was worried about seeing the sides of the cardboard, too. You know, I'm just getting picky on this. Is what you're why not make it look as good as possible? And I just didn't know how to do that. Maybe we just cut white paper and go around it. That'd be the easiest way. Yeah. Like. After I thought about it, I was like, what if we can make a 12-foot pin? <laughs> <laughs> how big could he print that out? <laughs> 12 foot would be difficult. I mean, it would want to just fold right in half. Right. It would have to be. Or you need a stake so large. Right. That it would have to be really supported. You just lay it down on the ground. Well, no, what I thought was that you'd stick the stake in the ground and it would run up all the way through the center and it sure. would just be thick. It would take building and I don't have any patience nor skill for any of that. So. Six foot is good. Yeah, it, it'll do. I drove down to Walgreens. Did you go down there? I did not go there. I looked at it on the map. We wouldn't block one thing with it. Their sign is actually up high. I thought they had one of those digital signs, kind of low. Right where we want to put the pin is a big open patch of mulch and bushes and it's perfect the question is do we just go there and stick it in the ground or do we talk to the people at walgreens first i think it'd be nice to talk to them the problem is they say no i, don't, I thought they said yes uh, I don't miss that. <laughs> that's my problem if they say no you are no longer comfortable sticking that in there I'd have some reservations. I would jam it in the ground while they were still in the store. The main thing is, is there anybody in there during a typical day that can answer that question? The store manager, sure. So right really the store manager. If you go in there with the, we're from the Rockingham We Arts Council, not you, not with that hair. <laughs> it's got to be me. I'll go in, put some good, pretty smooth talker, so I think I can probably schmooze them a little bit. Just tell them it's going to be up for a couple days. I don't think that's important. Tell them that we're going to put it up, but we will take it down. Yeah, we'll put it up. We'll take it down. It's part of a community arts project, and one of our artists have come up with an idea of putting a Google pin exactly. where it is. I wouldn't say no if I were the manager. You never know what you're going to get. And if he says no, I don't know what to do if he says no. Well, you might can negotiate something. If I was the manager, my concern would be, oh, they're going to put this other there and leave, and I'm going to have trash my property I have to take care of. If you tell me you're going to take it down, I don't say it would hurt him. We'll just have to talk about what we're going to put on that sign, because right now there's a lot of information. Pin's going to be completely covered over. <laughs> Is this an uh, art project or a mural? <laughs> All right, so the We Arts Project, it's on its way. I'm feeling really good about it. I really wish I had more friends on Facebook. Next, we're going to talk about a video we created, Smiling Jack Laughs Last. Yeah. All right, so this was a video project I conceived of. I'd gone to a website called Creepy Pasta. And what that is, people create horror short stories. I looked at that site, read some stories, and I saw a video based on a story by Blue Title. He's the author, and I actually asked him for permission to create this video. I did not get permission until after the video was filmed, and if he had not given me permission, I just would not have ever posted it. Really? Yeah. He's the author. I mean, to do it right, you have to get his permission. So what did he say? Was he just like, yeah, or was he like flattered, or was it... Here's the thing. I saw the story. Of course, his story was huge. It's a very well-written story, so it had been posted on a lot of different sites. So I was trying right. to track down the origin of his story, which was the website Reddit. Find him on Reddit. He's not posted in a year. So I'm thinking, this is a long uh, shot. You're never gonna get I create that. an account, send him a message, and I say, hey, I want to make a video of your short story. How do you feel about that? And this was before I ever started filming. I go ahead and start filming. Right. A few days before I was done, I gave him a message. He's like, that'd be great. And when you're done, send me a link. I'd love to watch it. So I got his permission. And I did it. Wow. I tried to sign into Reddit and find these original messages I sent to this guy, but I don't remember my password or my username or anything. <laughs> so I did not get very far. <laughs> the video that was my inspiration is called 2AM, and that is on YouTube. So I like the video, but I wanted to kind of amp it up and do something a little bit different. They're very similar, but there are some different. I remember watching the original video, but I just don't, I don't remember enough about it. I remember the, the guy who played Smiling Jack was really creepy. He is really creepy. Yeah. He was a lot creepier than me because I played Smiling Jack in the video. 
So when I came up with this video, I sent out a Facebook message because that's the best way to get in touch with people and asking them to be in my video. I got all of three people to agree, which is a little fewer than I wanted because I had a mob scene I wanted to create, but that didn't work out. Wait, wait, was I one of those people? Originally? Yeah, you were one of them. Oh, okay, all right. It was you, Ethan, and Carson. <laughs> and three guys that'll pretty much do anything. I got a lot of people said, oh, we'd love to, but we can't tonight. And then one guy said, oh, that's kind of late, because I believe we started filming at 12 o'clock at night. It was late. It was really late. Yeah. We well, and, I, and it was short notice, too, if I recall. Like, I don't think you gave me, like, three days notice. Hey, can you be I'm in this? I'm not sure it was that much. And can you star in it? <laughs> I want to say that it might be the same day. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's only a couple of days. I said, hey, I'm filming this tomorrow night or tonight. You so, know I like filming anything, so I'll do it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I just assume you'd be in. Yeah. So I think we started filming 11 or 12 and wrapped it up about 3 o'clock. No, was it that late? It was late. It was, it was extremely late. late. I know the police were called. The police were there. <laughs> All pleasant. Nobody was arrested. <laughs> I really liked the video. Ethan's the main character. He runs away from this guy and runs around the street. So I'd gone to Google Maps to plan out the routes. It'd be semi-logical. It could be recreated in real life. It's so easy to choose. Kind of. Technically, his truck was parked 50 feet from where he exited the restaurant. Other than that, <laughs> He kind of went a really long way to get to his truck. There's no dialogue in the video, which I never realized that until I watched it tonight. There's no dialogue. There's just laughing. That's it. And I like it because it actually, in my opinion, tells a pretty good story. There's never a concern of, well, what actually is happening here? No, I think it's very clear what this is going to be. Something's bad is going to happen to Ethan when he yeah. leaves the restaurant. And I did like that when I was going to find this video to watch it tonight, search it in Google, it's the first thing that comes up. Oh, really? Yeah. It's funny because when I went to go search it, I went to YouTube, typed in Ward Works, and you are the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> the fifth thing that comes up. Well, I searched Google for Smiling Jack Always Laughs Last. First result. I actually thought the video was really good. I thought it looked good. Other than a couple lighting things. The part where he does see me and I laugh, you can't really see me very well. I wish there was like a street light there. Yeah. And there are some street lights downtown. I didn't think, hey, you know what? It'd be better if I was under a street light. I just never even thought about it. Some of the lighting I really like. Yeah. And there's a lot of sequences where it's really dark. And it's kind of cool to have a mood to have it dark. But right. This, I like this, the dark. Some of it almost goes into too dark because you really are moving trying to see what's yeah. happening. Uh, yeah. Well, just that one part, just so you can really convey the creepiness of yeah. smiling. Yeah. When you were standing and laughing, if there had been a street light there, perfect. Yeah, that would have nailed it. Perfect, yeah. You can hear as I'm walking, my feet scraping along the ground, right? Yes. I had these dress shoes on. I screwed bottle caps to the bottom of the dress shoes two weekends ago. I went to a wedding. I pulled the shoes out, and I put them on, and I'm starting to walk through the house, and I hear click, click, <laughs> click, click. I'm like, what the, what's going on here? And shoes are just in the closet. I don't wear dress shoes for anything. I finally, it dawned on me. I look on the bottom, and there's still, still bottle caps screwed to the bottom. Now I'm on the workbench before the wedding, screwing them <laughs> out with a screw gun. <laughs> Real classy. <laughs> but I love that aspect of it, because if you don't know there's bottle caps in your shoes, you'd never pick it up. Right, yeah. But if you know, you definitely hear it, and it adds such a nice element. Yeah. And I love the sound. The music, some of my... Oh, I thought the music was great. Where did you get the music from? It's all free stock oh, stuff. Good. I don't use anything I can't legally use. I mean, not to say I did a great job, but I love the cueing in it. I love how it all fades in and out. I thought the music was really well done. Yeah. There are some shots that I would have done differently. For the most part, yeah, it was really well done. He's running down the sidewalk, and he stops at that gas station. Yeah. Logically, he should have hidden behind something. He just comes to the gas station and stops and looks around. Right. If you're in that mode where you're running from something, you wouldn't just stop. Stand in the light. Right, let me stand right in the middle yeah. of the bright light and see what's coming on. Right. <laughs> but if he'd been behind something and he hadn't, maybe he was hiding and not looking, it would add right. a little bit more to the tension to where. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I didn't have a mob. I composited these images to make it look like there were five or six people coming in. Right. Them. I only had two. The camera cut and everything was a little weird. Right. Because you don't really know whose point of view you're looking at. If it's his... Why did he stand there so long watching six people come out to get him? Right. One of the biggest problems that you have is you have all the ideas in your head, all the lines written down, but when it comes to directing, I don't know why you don't direct. I don't know whether it's you don't want to offend people, whether you don't want to be like, hey, do that again, that, that wasn't great, or because you feel like they're doing you a favor. I don't know what goes through your mind then, because that same scene when he was walking down the street, he just didn't look panicked at all. Like, you're just get casually out for a walk. Everything's fine. I didn't just get chased by a creepy dude who was 100 feet away from me and then was 20 feet away from me in a, in a blink of an eye. You're exactly right. In the video, he runs. He runs around the corner. He sees nobody out. He slows down. Right. Everything's cool. It's all right. I'm good. <laughs> and I remember watching it thinking, 
why doesn't he direct him? And I was going to step in and direct him, and I was like, this isn't my video, man. I, I mean, part of it is, yeah, somebody's doing a favor. The other part is, I'm watching the script, trying to make sure that I get this scene right. In a perfect world, I'd have somebody that would read the script, make sure the script's right, and just let me direct, and let me make sure I got the shot. Right. I never thought, oh, you know, I wish I had a cinematographer, but sometimes it'd be nice to have somebody do that, and just let me watch this actor and make sure he's getting what I want. Right. But if really, for me, there's just so many things going on. If he's in the scene and he doesn't stumble or fall and look like a complete idiot, good enough. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> good enough. One take. <laughs> I understand. I think that's what lacks in our videos. And I feel like sometimes you're just like, that's good enough. Even the one that we did, Human GPS, I, you were like, that's good enough. And I don't want you to feel like that's good enough. I don't want to feel like that's what, exactly what you wanted. F praised this video a lot. Yeah. And I don't always praise my videos. When we, get to, when we review the GPS, you'll see that I don't praise all my videos because that one I will tear apart. And I think you're exactly right on that. That's good enough. Yeah. That video personifies why good enough is not good not enough. Not good enough, right. The gas station scene, I like it. I don't like it. I like that it kind of looks like there's six people there. Yeah. But if you look closely, you can definitely see where one section of the screen gets freeze-framed. Right. And then there's one part where two people just disappear. It's not great, but with what I had, it's actually kind of awesome. That yeah. It looks as good as it does. I think I am the person that comes out of every one of those two. It was you and Carson. And on, on the right side, that is yeah. you. That's <laughs> And there were a couple of out-of-focus shots. I don't even know. The camera was supposed to auto-focus, but there were two shots that were slightly out-of-focus. Yeah. Well, this might have been the lighting. And that could be. Yeah. Another thing, when he first sees you and you stop, I wish there was more tension there. You know, he goes, he runs and hides. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, there, was, there were a few shots that I thought, ah, you know, this may be a little too long. I maybe should have shot this differently to increase the tension. Yeah, yeah. I never really felt scared enough, I thought. I mean, maybe that's just me and I've seen this video so many times. Right. Well, yeah, when I laugh at him, he shouldn't run right away. Like, he should almost take a second look, and then my face should kind of come down to him. Yeah. And then that's when he should maybe book it. And that been some great tension. There just needs to be something more there to right. really bring it home. You're right. He just you laugh and he runs away. I'm not sure if I would normally do that. Right. I laugh and he blows it off, and then he turns around to walk away, and I'm on the other side. Yeah. Closer. He sees who he crosses the street. All that makes sense. Right. That street was empty, and then you reappear. And you could maybe write that off. Right. But I think it's like you said, I had one more thing to really yeah. drive it home. One more then creepy moment. Yeah. I really like the ending. You're surrounded at the truck, you know, I like the music there. I would say all my audio cues, this is probably... Yeah, yeah. No, audio, audio is the best I've ever done, I'd say. I agree. I wish it would have ended a different way. I just don't know which way it should have ended. I thought it was kind of two innings. When he's grabbing the truck and then when they're all coming from the truck. That whole sequence, or is there one part you didn't like? I didn't like how it ended in general. When he's in the truck, I think, what, it's Carson in the truck and he grabs him from behind. Yes. When he's, I don't know what I wanted it to... I don't know. I like that. You don't know whose point of view that is, but yeah. you just have these three guys coming from the person who's... Right. From the viewpoint, is on the ground. Right. I liked all that. I liked that yeah, whole yeah. sequence. Well, it looked good. And it was, I've seen every film made on there. And you exactly. probably have, what, about 10, 15? 15 is generous, probably yeah. 10. And that's the best one by far. Par in general is a little bit easier. I feel like I have a little more leeway to where things don't necessarily have to make sense. Because in horror movies, you have things to don't often make sense, yeah. right? You don't have to adhere to this logical construct where in dramas and other things, well, things kind of have to follow a sequence. It needs to make sense. And horror does. It's probably my least favorite movie to watch. Right. But it might be my favorite one to make because it's easier. Because <laughs> everything I do is no budget. Yeah, right. I always feel like you should get the kids involved just because kids and horror, it's so much creepier to me when it's a kid. I just hesitate. If I was a kid, you know, you grow up, those embarrassing photos when you're younger. Yeah. I don't want to be that kind of situation. I'd like for <laughs> my son to have some kind of say. And at this age, of course, he's going to agree. But in 10 right. years, he may think, man, dad's just pimping me out in these videos. <laughs> I don't think so at all. My kids love this kind of stuff. They're old enough to understand, and they love doing it. Anytime you need kids, my kids are the kids for you. They're not going to do this all day. <laughs> They're going to want to play some Wii later. Yeah, I did one video with my son. I'm not edited yet, but I have all the footage. You could get about eight minutes out of him, and he was done. So it took all week to film what will, in essence, be a two-minute video. <laughs> we should finish that other video, too. So the one where the robbery in the house. Yes. I don't remember how your version turned out. You could almost move that, use that same kind of music for it that you used for Smiling Jack. Yeah. All the footage is there. We, you need to figure out how you want to edit it. The ending. I wanted it to end. You pan up and picture Easy. me, and I'm a priest. Easy. <laughs> Yeah, I love that project. I've always wanted to do something where... Because, you know, two guys have two different ideas. And I've always wanted to see a video where you have the same script, two different guys do it, and right. what you get out of it. Our videos use the same script and are wildly different. Oh, well, I mean, we're, we're completely different, you know, how we want to see things, oh, yeah. I think. One thing I want to do with this podcast, which I've been working on this this past week, is radio drama performance. 
which I'm not a huge fan of. I understand that. But I will do it. Well, it's kind of cool because Abe Zanderkin, when I initially created that first video, I envisioned it as a series. That was going to be my big web series. Right. I remember. Web series are really hard to make. You have to do it semi-often. <laughs> you have to keep up with it more than once every two yeah. years. <laughs> and, you know, videos are tough. Settings, actors, all this stuff. And, of course, every video I have starts out as, okay, I'll have one or two actors. And by the end, it's like, we need five or six actors. It snowballs. And it's tough. You know, I'm shooting for the stars in every video. Right. I've written three additional Abe Zanderkin sagas. I've transitioned two of them to radio and drama performance. And it's really kind of cool. I can have as many parts as I want, and we can almost do every voice. And I think we have enough range to make these voices distinct, where it gives you a lot of cool freedom. I agree. I, I, like, I like the idea of us playing most, if not all, the parts. One thing about us playing all the parts, I do like having guests in there. That's one of the things that the more the merrier. You know, if you can have a lot of fun with that. I rewrote those to be radio drama. I always like me have limitations because, again, there's no video, so I can't show you a floor shot to let you know you're in one. It's been a lot of fun to write these things, think about, okay, all I have is this one aspect to create a scene. How do I let people know, hey, this guy's walked into a commercial business? Which the easy way is, have a bell ring. Have somebody say, welcome to Bill's floor right. shop. Right. Which, again, in my original script, none of that was there because, well, you'd see it. I didn't need to put it in there. So when you do this, do you plan on making the sound effects as we do it, or is it more like you're going to put them in in post? Since you can just edit it. Or do you want to really make it like old-timey radio where somebody's making the sound effects as we go? I feel like someone making the sound effects gets a little difficult. We have to go somewhere to record this. We need somebody to bring all this stuff. Right. My thought is to have the sound effects as we do it because that adds a lot to the mood. And again, I'm just going to use stock sound effects. I may have to create some of my own, which I've done this from my other videos, so it's right. not a big deal. I can load them up on a tablet, play them as we go. I'm really excited. I'm not, but I'm with you. <laughs> I'll, do with I'll do it. I'll do it. Who would you get to come in and play? That's a good oh. question. I thought about that. You know, in case one of us are not here to record, I don't even know where I would begin with that. I don't know either. Because there's very few people that, A, want to do it anyway, and B, if you tell them, yeah, it's going to be posted to the internet too, I feel like that just cuts your field down by so much. Yeah, you have to find somebody who wants to be out there. And you need somebody that's kind of creative. That's not easy to find. No, not at all. <laughs> Which is why I cannot think of a single person no. that could do this. Because in that same one, I thought about, I'd really like to interview some people. I mean, I want to keep it kind of creative people, things in that yeah. realm. And I don't know a lot about that, how to approach people. And then, yeah, we're going to film in a back alley at night. You know, would you like to join us? How approaching people, not a problem. That's where I come in. But who to get, who's creative, and who we want to sit here and talk to. And, oh, you did this? I can't think of one person. I've got a bunch. Really? People we know collectively? or is Not collectively. <laughs> these are acquaintances that I don't know if they would agree. In essence, all these people are just Facebook friends. Right. But a guy I used to go to church with is a cameraman for the TV show Cops. Really? Yes. Wow. So I would love, love to have that guy in here. How do you get on Cops? What did you study? How did you get from point A to point B? What yeah. have you seen? Because that would be awesome. What life decision brought you down that path? Because <laughs> you're a cameraman on Cops. <laughs> I know another guy that local that at one point was trying to create a feature-length horror movie. Local in Rockingham County? Yeah. Remember that video I did in the abandoned building? I don't remember that one very well. that's because you never like, saw an actor so dark. And right. I was just going to say, I think it was just sounds. <laughs> yeah, it really was. Yeah. But he was in that. I was talking to this guy this weekend, and he interviews politicians. He has a like local cable access channel television show. I wonder why he's doing it. I mean, he's getting the information to the people. I think you'd be better off doing the interviewing, because it's like two questions and I'm done. <laughs> oh, you interview politicians? I don't like any of those people. <laughs> What could you possibly ask them? Because I would get them in there, and I would ask them the most obscure questions. <laughs> What's the strangest thing you ever done to pledge your fraternity when you were in college? <laughs> well, see, I don't really care that you interview politicians. I just want to know, how do you start your own cable access TV channel? What possessed you to do that? Would you ever do cable access? Would I? Yeah, don't we have a TV station here in Rockingham County? Couldn't even begin to tell you. Yeah, it's right downtown in, in Reedsville. What do you have to do to get on that? I have no idea. But there is, we do have a TV station here in, in Reedsville. You've never seen it? No. I have Netflix. I don't watch TV. <laughs> Time for movie reviews. This week, I watched The Hobbit, The Battle of the Five Armies. And the only reason I even watched this movie, I watched the first one, which I thought was okay. Which, which was the first one? The Hobbit. Whatever. Desolation of Smog or whatever That was, was the second one. Oh, okay. I can't remember the name of the first one. The Hobbit. Was it? Mine's been The Hobbit. I don't know. On principle alone, I don't like this movie. Lord of the Rings, three books, three movies, that makes sense. The Hobbit, one book, three movies. To me, it feels like it's a cash grab. Right. 
mean, why not make it five movies? Was this Peter Jackson, too? It was Peter Jackson. I think it's even amazing he even got to make Lord of the Rings when his previous movies had been a couple zombie movies and really nothing of note. Really? I may be wrong, but I know his most famous movie earlier than this was a zombie movie. I don't really know anything about him. Uh, until he made Lord of the Rings. You're in the same boat as everybody else because that's really the biggest thing he'd ever made. I remember watching them first and thinking, these movies are incredible. But then when I went to go watch them again, it was three movies of people walking. I mean, seriously, it was three movies of people walking. Even the trees walked. Come on. I went out and bought one of them on DVD and immediately regretted it when I started watching it. Like, man, this is not as good as I remember it. I have not watched any of the Hobbit movies. It'll ruin the books. I really like the Hobbit book. So I watched the first movie, and I thought it was okay. I watched the second movie, and I immediately thought, yeah, they strung these out just to make more movies. So I didn't want to watch the third one, but at that point, I figure I've watched the first two. Might as well complete the trilogy. And I actually, I liked the third one quite a bit. The second one, not so much. The entire movie is nonstop fighting. Do you have to watch the first two movies to get the third movie? Well, here's the thing. It's been a while since I've watched the first two, so I really didn't remember them. And so the first five minutes of this movie were me wondering, who's that guy? What he's doing? <laughs> Where are they going? I was so lost. And I thought about going to Wikipedia and reading a synopsis, but I figured, no, it's the movie's job to inform me of what's going on and give me a semblance of information. Because if you have a sequel trilogy, the movie should stand alone. It should at least give me no information to know what's going on. This right. movie put the onus on me to figure out what's going on. And I said, no, not going to do it. It's on you. So for the first five minutes, I had no idea what's going on. So then it transitioned to just fighting, because there's five armies. So there's a lot of fighting. Right. And you don't really have to know what's going on. Hey, that guy's fighting that guy. Okay. I'm looking at Peter Jackson right now to see what movies he made. You know, I always remember his one of his first zombie movies, and I can't remember what it's called exactly. Oh, I'm looking at it up. Let me tell you. I was watching it, and I was eating meatloaf and mashed potatoes, which you really shouldn't be watching a zombie movie. A mother or an aunt or somebody to become a zombie, and her face was falling off into the soup she was eating. Uh. So me eating meatloaf, watching that... I was one of those stories that was not pleasant. Right. I didn't stop eating my meatloaf, but I seriously considered it. I typed up his directorial movies. One's called Bad Taste, 1987. Meet the Feebles, 1989. Dead Alive, 1992. Dead Alive. That was the movie I watched with the zombies. And yeah, it looks awful. Heavenly Creatures, 94. Forgotten Silver, 95. The Frighteners, 96. With Michael J. Fox. And then Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. How did this guy get this job? How did he get this job? Did they think this movie was going to flop? Because didn't they film all three of those movies? Yes. But think about it. The guy had there some kind of amazing pitch. We just read <laughs> what he's done. And then they gave him Lord of the Rings. Multi-million dollar movie. I mean, I don't know how much they spent on these. One of these hundred million dollar movies? I have no idea. I know idea. they spent a lot on them. And to give to this guy, give him three movies where the success is on him? Yeah. I mean, he did a great job, and kudos to him, but... Why in the world would you give it to a guy yeah, that's in essence is unknown? Yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So back to the Hobbit movie. And one thing I didn't like about it, it didn't seem like it was really about Bilbo. He really seemed like a secondary character. Is that who the first two movies were about? Yeah, Bilbo's Bilbo. the main oh, okay. Hobbit. Oh, yeah, right. This movie, if I hadn't read the book, I would not have realized this movie's actually about Bilbo and his journey. It really, really never made me feel like that. And another weird thing that is there were some very odd humorous segments of the movie. I laughed out loud. I watched Let's Be Cops a few weeks ago. I laughed more at this movie than at Let's Be Cops. <laughs> like, there's one comedic relief character. You could have taken him out, and the movie would have been so much better. The entire movie, I'm hoping, all right, let's kill this guy. Let's get him out of here. He's boring. He's not even that funny. Let's, it's just kind of movie that's a setup where you know he's going to die. Because right. that, that's going to be his reward. Right. Nothing ever happens. He runs off into the sunset. Nothing ever happens. <laughs> you got to give me something. You made me watch this horrible character and you don't even kill him to give me some kind of relief. <laughs> there were a couple of things that were just these humorous moments of comedic relief in a movie that, to me, should not have any comedy in it, at least not like that. And I have to say that Legolas, who was played by Lando Bloom, right. had more moves than Spider-Man in this movie. He must be some kind of superhero. Spider-Man could not have moved like Legolas moved in this. Really? Yeah. There's like some falling tower. He's jumping to find gravity. My wife and I were just watching this, laughing the entire time. It was just utterly ridiculous. Really? Yes. Because we can. And millions and millions of people are going to watch this. The orcs. They're the main bad guys. These are a race of people who are bred for battle. Superior armor. Superior weapons. And all you need to do to defeat an orc, hit him in the head with a butt of your sword. That's it. <laughs> These are the huge things, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They fight one of them in, um, well, they probably fight more than one, but they fight one, I think, in the second Lord of the Rings movie, where he's huge and they have a hard time taking him down. 
Well, there's, I think, a few different variations that works. These are seven feet tall type guys. Oh, no, no. This one was huge. But, you know, one of them had a sword for an arm. Just hit him in the head with the butt of your sword. They'll go down. <laughs> I'm not sure any of the good guys actually died in the battle. Thousands upon thousands of orcs versus, I don't know, five to 15 doors and right. elves. Yeah, it didn't touch doors or elves. All the orcs dead. And I hate that because in a movie like that, you're going to set it up where, oh, they're really in danger. But nobody gets hurt except for the bad guys. I don't think they're. I don't. I don't think they're written very well. I think it's like watching Avengers. The digital work is great. It lacks in story or any type of. I can't believe that person died because it's never going to happen. Take Star Trek. You always have the joke about the red shirt guys. The security team. They always die. You know, you up right. the stakes. Look, somebody dies. Right. <laughs> Put a door in the red shirt and have them die. Problem solved. <laughs> and they hit you over the head and punch you in the face with greed is bad. Mm. That ties in the comedic character because he was one of these greed as bad guys. I like the movie. I'd recommend renting it. But man, it's weird. On do people levels. rent movies anymore? Because you know, I do see on your things you're like rent it. I'm like rent it from where? I where am I, I going to rent I'm it? I'm sure at? Netflix, the DVD service. Oh yeah, yeah. Netflix and, or Redbox maybe. And yeah. Amazon does allow you to digitally rent movies for a while. Oh really? I have no idea. Three bucks, you can rent a movie for. 24, 48 hours. Honestly, if it's not in the red box, I'd, I have no idea. Yeah, red box is... I feel like I should have jumped in on that red box thing right when it started coming out. <laughs> they were trying to franchise that thing out. And I was like, nah, it doesn't sound like it's really going to make it. <laughs> now there's one everywhere. All right, the next movie I want to talk about is Election, a.k.a., and I'm going to mispronounce this, Hak Se We. It's a Hong Kong film from director Johnny Toe, who is acclaimed for directing mobster-type movies. A lot of people, a lot of people, me and my wife, does not like watching movies with subtitles. I don't mind, I don't mind the subtitles. I, I guess it just depends on what kind of movie it is. I mean, Kill Bill has a lot of subtitles in it. Uh, what else has, has a lot of subtitles in foreign it? Foreign movies. All, <laughs> of All the foreign movies? Yeah, nice. <laughs> but I made a movie that I would probably go out and watch. This movie does have subtitles. I mean, that used to kind of turn me off a little bit because I feel like when there's subtitles, I spend more time reading than watching. Watching what's, what's on the thing, right? In the beginning, when I started watching all these movies, I wished, oh, I wish they would just dub it. And now I would never watch a dubbed movie. You no, know, I got into a stretch where I watched a ton of Korean films. Right. And I could start to pick out different words to where I would have to read all the subtitles because I could hear what they were saying. But I feel like you lose that when you dub it. The guy dubbing it does not quite have the inflection the guy acting it does. And you think, oh, that doesn't really matter, but it makes a difference. What got you on a kick of watching Korean films and then Japanese films? I watch everything. In Korean cinema, there's a lot of revenge films. For a while, that was what they were famous for, these revenge films. These are fairly acclaimed movies. Old Boy especially. That's why it was remade in America. It's called Old Boy? Josh Boy. Remade in America with Josh Brolin and Elizabeth Olsen. Didn't do as well in America because they changed a lot of things. Back to Election. This one was definitely a solid action mobster type flick. You have two gang leaders who are going to be the triad boss, and the triad leader is elected. It's democracy. I appreciate the criminal organization has democracy. <laughs> That's <right? a> democracy. <laughs> but it's a cool film because you have these two leaders, which are both very different. And American can sometimes be over the top. And by sometimes, I mean nearly all the time. Right. No, especially gangster movies. Yeah. I, mean. I think the first movie I watched of this guy, Johnny Toe, was Drug War, which came out a couple of years ago. And, and it was good enough for me to let me say, let me see what else this guy has made. He's, this is a pretty cool movie. Yeah. I definitely like this. A lot of intrigue and back and forth and bribing people and killing people. And this is all subtitle. This is a subtitle. Oh, yeah, all subtitle. Okay. And the ending was awesome. One of those things you didn't see coming, you're like, it makes complete sense. I'm going to have to check that out. I would say check it out. I don't think it's his best film. I thought it was very sufficient. Next, I watched the 2014 Godzilla. Oh, I have no interest in that. Nor should you. <laughs> I did see the 90s or early 2000s. 98. Wasn't it 98? 98. Matthew was, Broderick. Matthew Broderick, yeah. It was awful. I watch oh it. Can't remember it. I think when you don't remember something, it's because you're suppressing it. Sure. And that's probably part of... I don't remember it really well. I remember going to the movie theater to watch it, thinking it was awful. I remember Puff Daddy... Or was he P. Doing Diddy? The, was yeah. he P. Diddy? P. Diddy or Puff Daddy? I don't know. Well, he did the theme song. Yes, and I did like the theme song. That was a good song. song. Yeah. I love the movie, though. The only time you hear that song, you hear an instrumental when they're walking in a subway car for two or three seconds. Oh, That's it. I don't know. I don't know. Like, I had to shoot one in. <laughs> Which is amazing, because I remember going out and actually buying It's Led Zeppelin. It's I mean, a it's cover not of a Led Zeppelin song. Yeah, Puff Daddy's song really isn't that great. It's the fact that he sampled Led Zeppelin. Right. Well, and he actually got, for the video at least, Jimmy Page and Robert Plant to be in the video. When you do something like that, I'm going to check it out. But he's been in some movies. i got to say, I enjoyed a couple movies that he's been in. Puff Daddy? Yeah. 
What movie is it? I saw a movie with him. Like, the one that I like is called Made. Favreau, John Favreau, Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn and John Favreau are they're just regular guys. They work for like a mobster. They do like construction and Peter Falk plays the mobsters. So that's definitely something you should check out. So Godzilla twenty fourteen. I didn't expect a good movie. It's Godzilla. I didn't expect average. I knew it would be kind of bad, but I was kind of surprised at how bad it was because it had Brian Cranston, which definitely a good actor. He's one of my favorite actors. I'm saying this movie, you really can't say what he did was good. You can't really fault the actor when he has nothing on the page to work with. The guy just got off doing one of the biggest TV shows in TV history. Why would he do Godzilla? Does he say no to anything? Even during Breaking Bad, he was in a lot of movies as these bit parts. Yeah, you want me to do a movie? How much? Okay, let's shoot it. Some fan actually met him outside of a restaurant or something and asked him to ask a girl to the prom for him. And he got completely his Walter White character. If you don't take him to the prom, <laughs> or if you don't say yes, <laughs> I'm going to come and get you. It was just really spoke like highly of the person that Brian Cranston probably is. And To go out and do Godzilla, maybe he does say yes to everything. Maybe you should say no to some things. <laughs> I think he says yes to everything. I don't think he's going to now. I mean, it took a couple seasons for people to actually catch on to that show. Sure. Most people during, doing TV on that kind of schedule don't even do movies in between. Ostensibly, he must not have stopped filming. Stops Breaking Bad goes right to that movie. I mean, he crunched a lot of, into a short amount of time. Was he like a main character in Godzilla? No. Oh, okay. First eight minutes of the movie... He's already gone. He's already killed? Yeah. Five minutes in, I knew I was witnessing a script that was not no good, but not. it could have been much better. Yeah. And I was surprised because one of the reasons that I was attracted to this movie was that the director is Gareth Edwards, who has not done a ton of stuff, but in 2010, he did a film called Monsters. He tells Indy, right. but he makes it work, and it's really good. I really like it. What works in that film is not working in this film is that, yeah, you have these big monsters. The movie's never about that. They were a side plot. Right. The main movie is about... This relationship between two characters. Godzilla movie? This movie was made just so we could put Godzilla on the screen. I wrote a script around that, which never works out. All right. Well, yeah, I think, that's, I think that's the problem with a lot of these movies today. I don't know who bought the, Mar- the right for Marvel movies. Was that Fox or somebody? I, I can't remember. Doesn't Marvel own the right to the Marvel movies? Well, no. Somebody actually makes all those movies. So there's Marvel Studios. I think it's 20th Century Fox that does them. I can't. That's the problem with all those movies. They're so ridiculously budgeted that it's all just about the graphics and Iron Man and what's the new car he's driving. What's the gadget he's going to have this time? That just bores me. I don't interest in any of that. I saw the first two X-Men movies and I thought they were really well done. But then I saw Iron Man and I thought they completely lost our minds. I have no interest in any of that. And I don't want to see Godzilla on the screen. I want to see a story. I want to see something good. Gareth Edwards, obviously is a good director. He wrote and directed Monsters. He did this. Why would you do this movie when, if you read the script, you know it's not that great. And it's just because it gets his name out there. Right. I mean, financially, this movie made a lot of money. Right. And I don't know, is there a trade-off? I'm going to do this movie. I'll get my name out there. That's going to open opportunities. To me, and I'm a movie aficionado, so I may look at it differently, I think... He did this movie, and it's not good. You know, where is your artistry? There's a bit of a lack of artistry when you agree to do a movie like this. Someone comes to you, and they say, I want you to do live-action Powerpuff Girls. You have no interest in that. You're not going to say no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say yes. I'll say yes to pretty much anything you want to make. You want to pay me a couple million dollars to do it? Sure, I'll do it. Yeah, get your name out there. I'm sure he knew this movie was going to do well. Right. Does it hurt you in the long run when you do something like that? Is no. he going to be typecast for Clear, movies? Clearly not. Peter Jackson uh, is now Sir Peter Jackson. <laughs> so, yeah, no, clearly it doesn't hurt you. Lord of the Rings movies are good movies. Yeah, but see, he was offered that Lord of the Rings movie from doing nothing. And the same That's thing true. with this other guy. He got offered Godzilla, and it could have turned into the next Lord of the Rings. But instead, it turned into some movie that I'm never going to see. Let's see. What can Godzilla do? He can fight giant spiders. What's his next step? King Kong is the next step. I mean, is that where you go? They remade King Kong a few years ago. I think it's time oh, to get these guys together. <laughs> Peter <laughs> Jackson remade King Kong. No. Yes. No. And guess what? The movie didn't do very well. No, I'm sure it didn't. <laughs> Climbing well, a tower. I wonder if that was his next movie after Lord of the Rings. It might um, have been. And I'm sure that real people that have real talent, like musicians and things like that, they have to deal with this. At some point, you're going to have to sell a little bit of your soul to broaden your fan base, to put your name out there. And I, mean, I get that. I think about Chris Evans, who does Captain America. Right. He's done some really. He did some really cool movies prior to Captain America. He's did some really awful movies before Captain sure. America. <laughs> but you know, Captain America. I don't consider that selling out. I don't fault him for that. 
But Garrett Edwards had to know that this Godzilla movie is not quite going to catch on. Yeah, but why? Why do you? Why do you not fault Chris Edwards? Because that, I mean, Chris, Chris Evans? Evans, yeah. Because you know what? That is selling out. You're being Captain. You're you're just becoming a superhero, and you know that this is going to be a big blockbuster movie in the but long if, run. The movie's going to be garbage. Well, you saw. I mean, Godzilla did great at the box office, so. right? But in the long run, it's not going to be something you look back on thirty years from now and be like. That that original that 2014 Godzilla was amazing. No, you never. You, it's going to be trash. They're going to make another one in five years to try to beat that one because it was so bad. They're like, hey, that Godzilla in 2014, we can do better. <laughs> I think we could. I think we could do a little better than that. Where's Matthew Broderick? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get him back. <laughs> and people keep flocking to these movies. Yeah, the thing I'm good about this Godzilla movie though, I looked at it in the first five minutes. I knew. This writing is not good. As much money as they put into this, why couldn't they just hire somebody to ghostwrite it, tweak it a little bit? It because makes no you, sense to me. Because you can't make that movie good. But it's a movie it about guts. No, you can't. You cannot make that better. People don't want to see stories anymore. That's what I'm telling you. Is I, I don't think that they, they care. They just want to see the action. The Best Picture winner is nominated for Oscars. No, They made no money, practically. Right. And American Summer made the time. He's like, why is this? Where is the disconnect? Because people don't want good movies. Look at the movies that did well this past year. They are not good movies. They're not well-written movies. Right. So I guess you're right. People don't want good movies. No, they just want they want action. And, and you know, I talk to other people, and they, that's what they want. They're like, oh, my gosh, see the scene where he, this happened? You're like, yeah, I saw it. It doesn't do anything for me. Occasionally, there'll be something that happens, and I'm like, wow, that was incredible. The beginning of the second X-Men movie, Nightcrawler. He keeps disappearing and reappearing, and he's going mm-hmm. through the White House. That's a great opening sequence. Did you see the most recent X-Men, Days of Future Past? No. Oh, that was really good. Really? Yeah. The best X-Men movie that came really? out. Really? Yeah. Wow. I thought the first one was just good because it had story. Yeah. And, and those first movies always have story. And then when they make $100 million, it's like, well, all right, well, let's let's jack up the action here. Let's cut the story and throw a whole bunch of CGI at it. We made money. We don't need story anymore. <laughs> right. and, that's, and that's exactly what happens. Yeah. That's, that's exactly what happened. But Days of Future Past, I liked it because, to me, it seemed like they didn't feel the need to shoehorn every single X-Men character we know of. Get them in the movie for two <laughs> seconds. Let's do it. <laughs> Where's Ant-Man? Get Ant-Man in here. And again, I may be a bit biased because it's about time travel, a weird version of time travel. Right. Of course, I love time travel movies, so if it's time travel, I'm going to watch it. Right. But I thought it had a pretty good story. I'd read about the original comic book, the story it was based on. Right. I like that story a lot better because, of course, this one, Wolverine had to be the main character because Wolverine has to be the main character in everything. Which... Well, and they're paying Hugh Jackman a fortune, so I'm very curious to know what X-Men characters made it because I used to love the comic as a kid. I was, was surprised there weren't more. I mean, usually it seems like I try to shoehorn them all in, and right. it was a lot fewer. Well, that's what seems to be what seems to be what's happening with the Avengers movies. It's just, let's try to get as many people in there as we can. Well, because now it's we're going to put them all in there, and they're all going to have their own spinoff movies. Right. Who does well? It's just business. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just business. Which one of these characters did people love? Let's grab that character and make make a movie for him. Thor, Iron Man, Captain America, and other Avengers. They have all these planned out well into the future. It's a factory of I used to be called a geek for reading these books. <laughs> <laughs> now they're cool. It really is amazing the yeah. twist that took. Yeah. What was the first one? Was it Iron Man? Was that the one that really started the change? Or I guess X Men was X-Men. before that. Yeah, X Men. Yeah, and you look back and or when the Batman's came out, when Michael Keaton Batman came out, that was a big deal. Yeah, well, if you were a comic geek, that Batman movie was this is it. Now you look back on it, it's just so so cheesy compared to the newer Batman ones, the Dark Knight Rises and stuff like that, the Christian Bale ones. It's so cheesy compared to those. Michael Keaton is Batman. Michael Keaton is Batman. I went yes. to the movie theater to see the original Batman, and my family so never I, went to the movie theater. No, same. So we went for that. That's the same thing in my house. We went for that. They gave away like T-shirts as you waited in line with the Batman thing on it, the yeah. Batman logo. I remember drawing that Batman logo everywhere. We very rarely ever went to movies, and that was when we stood outside and like waited in line and waited for the people to exit the theater, so it was our turn to go in. Oh, I remember leaving it and thinking, this was amazing. That was amazing. I don't know if it's good anymore. I, I don't know that I could seriously sit down and watch it anymore. I like Jack Nicholson. And of course, now, you know, every Joker is Heath Ledger. At yeah. the time, you know, I mean, you were coming from the comic book. I thought he was a good translation. Yeah, oh, I thought he was a really good translation. I thought he actually did really well, too. But, you know, yeah, of course, everybody, the Heath Ledger one, you know. It's... And I'm sure he did a wonderful job. Yeah. 
I think it was more the makeup, uh, you know, the makeup and the scarring on his face. You know, I thought that was amazing. He sold him. He really, yeah. he acted very well in that. Thanks for listening to Fridays on the Fly. I'm Eric. And I'm Ward. You can find us on our blog at fridaysonthefly.blogspot.com. From our website, you can contact us and subscribe to us. Find us on Twitter at Fridays on the Fly. Find us on Facebook, of course, Fridays on the Fly. We will be on iTunes soon if you search Fridays on the Fly. Please rate our podcast on iTunes once it's up. We want to know what you think. Next week, we're going to update you on our pennant project, and we may or may not have our first radio drama. Stay tuned. In case you didn't get it, it's Fridays on the Fly. Really, just go to any website and search Fridays on the Fly. (laughs) You you may find us. (laughs) 